CSS can do many things that Webflow Interactions can't do. But even things that can be done in Webflow Interactions are often better to do in CSS. If you've ever wondered why your Webflow Interactions stop working inside of loop sliders, CMS filters, or dynamic modals, it's because Webflow Interactions only apply to the elements that were initially there on page load, not any future elements, whereas CSS can apply across all of them and improve performance. Webflow lets us disable our hover states on certain screen sizes, but some desktops use the tablet screen size and some tablets use the desktop desktop screen size. But in CSS, we can run our hover state only on devices that truly support hover. In this crash course, we'll cover how to easily get started using CSS and Webflow. We usually include CSS inside a code embed on our page so we can preview the results in real time without having to publish. CSS goes in between open and closing style tags that look like this, and we usually want to convert our entire embed over to a component and include that on every page of our site so that if we update the code inside one page, it'll change across all of them. And we usually want that embed at the top of the page so it runs before any of the structure. Now, there's three parts to CSS, and the first is the selector. In this case, I'm using a class name selector. Classes will always start with a period inside CSS. Then we have the actual property we want to apply, in this case, background color, and then we have the value. Now, we can have multiple properties and multiple values assigned to one selector. Now, a common issue people will run into with CSS or code in general is when we try to apply this class name here, we'll notice it's not actually going to work. And the reason for that is Webflow converts any spaces to dashes. They convert any capital letters to lowercase. And if our class name starts with a number, they'll add an underscore in front of that number. So if we save those changes now, we notice it actually works. That's why it's best practice to avoid capital letters, spaces, or starting your class with a number when naming your classes like so. And now that we have that set, it works on our card. So let's give this second card a combo class of is active. And to target this card in CSS, we'd head over to our embed and behind our first class name, we'd add a period and add our second class name is active. And so now it's only gonna target that card with the combo class of is active. So if we're ever targeting a combo class, we leave no space between the two class names. If we're targeting a child, then we would add a space. So here I'm gonna target any small text that's inside of any card. So if I save that, all the small text inside of the cards get this blue color, but when they're outside of the card, they do not have that color. So if we want to combine this, we can say only grab the card with the is active class and find the small text that's a child of that active card. So if we save that, now we're only getting this blue color on the small text inside of this card. This is great if you have an active tab link, active slider, or anything else, and we want to target children inside of that active item. So currently we're targeting all small text inside of the is active card. So if we have another one here, and even if we wrap it in a div, because it's a child of the card, it's still getting that style. Now, if we only want to target the direct child of the card, this is where we can use the greater than sign with a space on both sides. So here we're only targeting small text that's a direct child of that is active card. So we only have that first one here. And we can also target based on siblings. So if I have my logo here and I only want to target the small text that comes immediately after the logo, I would use this plus sign. And by doing that here, whichever small text is immediately after the logo is going to get that color. And if both of them are above the logo, that means neither of them will get the color like so. Now we can also target all siblings that come after an element by using this tittle instead of the plus sign. So now all small text following a logo will have that color. And if the small text are above the logo, they do not have that color. So this is great for targeting all siblings that come after the active item. Now, if we want to give two elements with different classes the same style, we would just comma separate them. So if I add a comma and a space, that means both the logo and the small text will get this style. Now, if we only wanted to apply this to the elements in the is active card, we'd say card is active and add a space. And then I would do the same thing for this next one here. So basically inside the active card, we're grabbing the logo. And then inside that same active card, we're grabbing the small text. And both of those elements get this style. 
Now, if we wanted to streamline this a bit more, we can wrap this in is, and this allows us to pass in multiple elements. So I'll pass in the logo and the small text, and that way we're selecting multiple children inside the is active card, but all on one line, and they're getting that style like so. Or we could use the star selector, and this just selects everything. So now all children of the is active card will have the style. Now we can also select elements by their tag or attributes. And to find the tag or attributes on an element, right click on it and click inspect. From here, we'll see all paragraphs have a P tag, images have an IMG tag, links have an A tag, and there's many other tags. The attributes are the things inside of the tag. So links have an href attribute that stores the URL for that link a target attribute that determines if it opens in a new tab, and images and videos have an SRC, source attribute, that stores their URL. They might have a loading attribute and other attributes as well. Now, if we wanna target by tag, we just simply type in that tag name. So we don't have to include a period in front of this, just IMG, and so we're targeting the images inside of the active card. So by saving that, we don't even need to have a class on this for it to apply. This is similar to how Webflow can allow us to target all images or all links, but in CSS, we have a lot more tags we can target. Now, from here, we might also want to target by an attribute. Now, to target by attribute, we add an open and closing straight bracket, and then we can pass in the attribute name. And then if we want to include the value, we would add equal signs, uh, open and closing quotes, and then pass in the value we're looking for here. So anything with a target equals underscore blank attribute will get this color. And that means anything that's set to open in a new tab, like this element here, is gonna get the color. When I uncheck and check, notice how it changes here. So then I could target maybe an arrow or an SVG inside of that um, external link and choose to show that when it's inside of the external link. We can also get more creative here. So instead of targeting the entire value of the attribute, we can say if it ends in maybe .pdf, then we show a different icon, or depending on what the attribute starts, ends with, or includes. And we can combine all of this together. So if instead of targeting every external link, I only wanna target the one with the class of card, I could go ahead and just add in my card class here. And if I wanna make sure that that element is actually a link tag, I could also include the tag. So we can combine all of these together. Or I could say uh, with the card that's an external link, actually I want to find the paragraph tag inside. So I just add P and then it applies to that tag like so. So there's lots of different ways we can combine these. And also we can use our own custom attributes. So if I say data cool text, I might decide to name it that. And then I can optionally include a value or not. I'll set that to true. And so now when it has this attribute name and value, it'll get that style. So on this text element, if I add that data cool text and I set the value to true, now I have the style. So next let's look at Pursuto classes, which allow us to style an element based on when it's in a certain state. Now Webflow only gives us access to a few of these, like whether or not the element is being actively pressed or focused or visited, but there's many more that we can use in CSS. So here we're only gonna cover some of the most common ones because there's many more than we could cover completely. But this active one here is the same thing as pressed in Webflow. So when we're holding down, Checks, we can style a radio or check mark whenever it's being checked. And then we can style an element like a button whenever it's disabled, an element based on whether or not it has no children or has no text inside. So if it's empty, um, if it's the first or last child or a certain child within the list, and this focus one is the one Webflow gives us by default. That'll trigger if we click on the element or tab onto it. But usually we want to use focus visible instead, which only triggers when we tab onto that element. That way our focus states aren't showing up unless we actually tab. And we also have focus within. So if the parent has a child that's being focused, uh, we can use this focus within to style that parent when its child is focused. And we also have this has here, and that can check if a parent has a certain child, uh, then we style that parent. So, so far we've only really been styling the child, like the small text here, when it's inside of a certain parent. But if we wanna flip that and target the parent, we can say if the parent has a child with a class of small text, then we style that parent. So any parents with that child get the style, and if it doesn't have the child, it does not have that style. And we can also use not. 
So here I'm gonna say any card that does not have a class of is active will get this style. So we'll notice now that our active card is uh, gray and all the other ones are the blue one like so. And this really helps when we start to combine them all with interactions. So we might grab the body and say whenever it has a child card that is being hovered, then we apply a blue background color to the body. So if we go ahead and save that, now as soon as we hover any card, the body background color turns to blue. And we can apply a transition to background color to smooth that out some if we'd like. And now we can take it a step further. So what if we want to target any card that is not being hovered? So when the body has a card that is being hovered, find any card that is not, so we're using not here, hovered. And when we do that, now we can hover any card to highlight its siblings instead. Now, if we want an element to smoothly animate, we usually should apply a transition to the property we're gonna animate. In this case, I'm gonna animate its transform. So I'll set the speed and the easing I want there, and then I can animate this element. For instance, I might decide to rotate it to 45 degrees whenever I hover. Now, if you're ever unsure of how to write a certain property, an easy way to do it is just to apply that property to an empty class here in Webflow, and then just copy it. So we can head over to the top, We'll go over to CSS preview and we'll just copy the CSS that was just written. And I can go ahead and delete that element now. So if we open up our embed and we just go ahead and paste in our CSS, we don't need the actual button wrap style. So it grabbed the parent styles here as well, which we're not actually gonna need, but we do want this one here. So what we're gonna do is we'll say whenever we're hovering over this button wrap, we want to rotate the button icon inside. So here I'll go ahead and say button wrap, and we'll say whenever we hover it, then find the button icon inside, and we'll go ahead and rotate it. So if we save that, notice when we hover, it rotates just like so. Now, if we also want this to rotate whenever we tab onto the element, we can use is, and that allows us to listen for multiple things. In this case, we'll say is hover or is focus visible. And that way, if we were to tab onto that element or hover on it either way, we'll rotate the icon inside. So if I go ahead and hit my tab key, you'll notice it rotates when I tab off or back on. It's rotating like so, and it also works with hover like so. I'll leave a link to this resource I created in the description below. This lists out common classes Webflow applies. So on the HTML element, when in design mode, it'll have this class. So if we wanna style any children inside this, only when in design mode, we could use this class here, and it'll go away when we preview or publish. We can also target any elements set to conditional invisibility or any elements inside our active page link, anchor link, or tab link. If we wanna target elements inside of the open nav menu button or inside of the active tabs or sliders or anything here, um, this was a good place to get started, but I'd recommend still just right clicking and inspecting on any elements because um, that's the easiest way to find out what classes Webflow has on these different elements. Now, another resource I'll leave here is sibling selectors. So if we wanna target all previous siblings of our focused element or our hovered element, maybe of a slider dot inside Webflow sliders or lightbox item, we can easily use this to target all next siblings, all previous siblings, the immediate next, immediate previous, uh, the sibling after the next or before the previous. And this allows us to give each sibling a progressive width or scale or however we want um, to add some nice animations to the siblings. So I hope this resource helps you get started with writing CSS in Webflow.